Hi, it's Chris. So, welcome back here on Catching Photons to the second episode of this first tutorial chapter. Last episode we learned all about the objects that can be spotted in the night sky. And now as you know that there are planets up there to be observed, you surely want to know where to look. Either way, a rough orientation is not only handy for impressing party guests on the balcony, it is necessary to get a good grip on astronomy in general. Look, there are go-to mounts out there like mine from Skywatcher and they have a handy handheld listing over 40,000 objects in the sky with the ability to automatically slew to them. That sounded like a navigation system to me back then and on my very first night of astronomy imaging I literally stood outside and was like, where the hell am I? Because thing is, you A need to know at least where Polaris is, you need Polaris to align your mount axis. And B, you should know where the brightest alignment stars are, because the scope needs to do a multiple star alignment before it's ready to slew. And the first pointings from the scope are like guesswork and you need to correct it, so knowing the main alignment stars is more than just handy. And either way, if you stroll down a street and something bright is slightly above the horizon, I personally find it edifying to know that this shiny dot is actually the planet Venus, or Mars, or Jupiter. So the first thing you do right now is install Solarium, right now. It's a free planetarium software, it's easy to use, it's pretty and handy and useful and you will need it either way. So I pause the video while you follow the link below. You ready? Great. Second thing is kind of a homework, use Solarium on a regular basis. Look what can be seen this evening, this night, where's the moon, uh, are planets in the sky, if yes where, can you spot Milky Way, uh, are there any deep sky objects up there you're interested in. And if you do this repeatedly you will get a feeling for some kind of rhythm, objects do vanish from the sky and reappear and vanish again and they do this on a regular basis. To know this rhythm is a cultural good that's lost in the sly polluted days. Few don't know where to look to spot Orion rising and that winter is coming when this beautiful star sign is creeping up on the late evening horizon. For ancestors running a farm that was a pressing question. Regardless, here's a brief overview of the night sky. Most importantly we need to align ourselves. Make sure you know where north and south is and to find north find Polaris. Polaris has always the same height above the horizon because it's close to the rotational axis of the sky. So for me it's around 45 degrees. Polaris is medium bright. It's the only bright star in this area and the tail of the star sign Ursa Minor or Little Dipper. And then turn south. This is where all the action takes place. Lucky me, my backyard has a pretty sweet view from east to south to west. First thing we look is the moon. It's rising in the east like everything else and then shifting through the sky, crossing south and then setting in the west. The moon will vary in height because its orbit is tilted, our rotational axis is tilted, so sometimes the moon is low, sometimes it's high. And the moon won't be in the same spot every day at the same time. The moon circles the earth every 28 days and therefore if it's on one place, say at 11 p.m., scratching your neighbor's roof or something, then on the next day at 11 p.m. it will be 1 28th of a complete rotation, so 1 28th of 360 degrees, so roughly 13 degree more east than the day before. So within a single night, moon rises east and sets west, but from night to night, given the same time, the moon shifts eastwards and then reappearing on the other side half a month later. Looking south is also where you can spot the planets. Here in the north they are always close to the horizon, one or two hands width on the long arm. The nearer you live to the equator the higher the planets will be. That's because we are roughly all in the same planetary orbit plane. The planets have their own movement. The outer ones like Saturn and Jupiter roughly follow the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. That means that within one night they rise east and sets west like everything else given Earth's rotation, but from night to night they seem to shift westwards given the same time every night. They do that like every star in the night sky. So if you look at the solar system from above then it's clear why that's the case. At a certain point in the year Earth is aligned with say Jupiter. Then Earth rotates way faster than Jupiter and half a year later Jupiter is high in the sky at noon, so we can't see it. 
half a year later then it's back in the sky at midnight and that repeats. The inner planets, Mercury and Venus, have kind of their own movement pattern. Because they are inside our orbit we can only see them in a certain range of angle from the sun. So they like wobble around the sun over a year. But because they move much quicker than Earth, sometimes they overtake Earth and in the sky it appears that they stop, again from one night to another with the same time each night, and then move backwards until they are far enough away and then stop moving again and moving in the other direction. This is called retrograde movement and is a major thing in astrology. But for us science people it's nothing mysterious, but only means the following rule. Every planet has its own window of observation. Right now, 2019, Jupiter and Saturn can only be seen in spring and summer. Now in winter they're gone, on the other side of the Earth, and only in the sky at daylight, so invisible to us. The movement of the stars and the star signs follow the Earth year. Some are in the sky at spring, some creep up above the horizon at late fall like Orion, and when you can spot it east, slowly making its way higher and higher from night to night, you know it's winter time. So what you can see here, shifting from east to west, is the Milky Way. It's our own galaxy. You can only spot the Milky Way at dark places. A faint milky stripe, hence the name, across the sky. It is the view inside our galaxy disk. So here, and there, that's above and beneath the galaxy disk. This direction is straight into the disk. So no wonder that most of the nebula deep space objects are within the direction of the Milky Way because they are inside our galaxy. As the disk is very flat, relatively speaking, there are way fewer stars above and beneath us than sideways. Isn't that amazing? You now know how to look out of our galaxy in the night sky. Crazy. Deep space objects like globular clusters, orbiting our Milky Way, and other galaxies, many million light years away, are more evenly spread over the night sky, because they are not part of our galaxy. Some galaxies are clumped in the night sky for whatever reason, and so if you're looking eastwards from the Milky Way plane around December, it's not only Christmas time, no, it's galaxy time. Knowing all this, and you shouldn't be surprised that on images within the galaxy plane, from nebulas and stuff, Sometimes the background is full of stars, because we are looking in the direction of the galaxy plane. And on some galaxy images, as we look out of our galaxy, there are just few stars. To get a better orientation of the night sky, here are some bright star signs and alignment stars. So this star sign here is Orion the Hunter, and Orion has a belt and Orion has a sword hanging down. So the belt is very obvious, because the stars are very bright. And the um, sword is made of three stars as well, and the center star is actually the Orion Nebula, a very famous deep space uh, target. And uh, so this target is uh, one of the few deep space objects you can see with a naked eye. You see this uh, fuzzy blob in the middle of the sword. So here's another set of very bright stars. This is Orion. And you have the belt of Orion, it's very obvious in the sky. Above this belt is Betagoids, it's a very bright star. Below this belt is Regal, it's a very bright star as well. And just following this line from the belt, so roughly, you're ending up here with Aldebaran. This is a very bright star too. So, another bright star is Sirius. Uh, if you found Orion, Sirius will be down there. It's a very bright star, you can't miss it. If you find Orion, you can find Sirius as well. So from Orion, going a bit westwards, we come to Cassiopeia. It's like a W, and on this edge of the W, it's pointing downwards to Andromeda. You will spot several bright stars in a line, and from this bright star, you can go up and we'll find another bright star and then a very dim star and to the right corner of the dim star you will spot the Andromeda galaxy and on very dark nights, very dark locations, you can actually see that fuzzy point in the night sky with a naked eye. As Cassiopeia is a very obvious star sign, we can find it and then leave it to the west side. And then we find 
uh, Urza Mayo or the Big Dipper. So it's obstructed by the neighbor's house, so we speed up time a bit. And this is the star sign. You will see those four stars, they are very bright, and um, those stars here. Then what you can do if you found uh, the Big Dipper, you can use it to find Polaris, because sometimes it's a bit hard to find Polaris. Uh, use uh, this two bright stars of the Big Dipper and project the line on in this direction. And then the next bright star is actually Polaris. So Polaris itself is part of the uh, Little Dipper, but the Little Dipper is sometimes a bit hard to see. So you can use those stars of the Big Dipper to find Polaris. So last but not least we uh, want to find two stars for alignment. We again use um, Orion and then we look up in the sky and so straight up in the sky the two very bright stars are Pollux and even brighter Capella and I used um, some of them to align my scope back then. But regardless you can only get a feeling for that if you sweep over the night sky yourself. Don't be overwhelmed the first night you step outside. It will all get used to you in a matter of time. So to sum up. The moon phases repeat every 28 days and the moon shifts eastwards from night to night. The stars, the Milky Way and outer planets shift westwards from night to night due to Earth's rotation around the sun. The inner planets dance on their own rhythm. They can only be seen close to the sun. Nebulous and dope star clusters can most likely be seen inside the plane of our galaxy. Distant galaxies and globular star clusters are more evenly spread over the night sky. Most importantly, use Stellarium. Nobody can teach you this with words. You have to get used to the sky and then walk outside and apply the new knowledge to the real world. So that was it. I hope this video gave you a little kick in the right direction. Next time? On a party, you can casually point at a star in the sky and say, hey, that's Jupiter over there. Just kidding. If you like this video and want to see more of them, hit subscribe. More importantly, if you know others who want to get into astronomy, point them here to start their journey. Let's spread this hobby. And last but not least, as I said before, if you're able to spot the Milky Way, look to the left and the right of the plane. You are literally looking out of our galaxy into the endless void of space. Try to pin that down with your mind. And as always, clear skies until next time here on Catching Photons.